We're going to um, fit an eye button to an SX 7000, it's actually an 8505, it's the same thing, same physical case, same connections. So any of the Uniwell SX, SX series of machines, it's the same for fitting the eye button. First thing to do is check that you've got the hole in the front. If you want to just have a quick look, this is where the eye button actually goes into. just switch it off at the plug socket. You can leave it plugged in, that will leave it earth, but there's no power to the machine. Take the key fob, the keys out of the computer and remove the case cover. And then you're going to need a size one crosshead screwdriver funding four screws. Better if your screwdriver is magnetic. as well. Okay, so now we're going to take off the lid. You've got to be a bit careful with this because there's some clips at the front, so you just need to unclip it and then tilt it to the right. And then lift the keyboard off a little bit. Be careful with the wires. And then we've got this hole here to make. Going to use a flathead screwdriver, just pop it in there and just break the little clips that hold it together eventually. So that circular plastic just pops out. washer on the outside of the so that that will sit on the outside of the case. Now there's a round side and a flat side on the washer. The flat side needs to be most flush against the case. So simply we're going to feed that through the hole and that's going to sit there for a second. We're then going to put the small brass washer on hole. And then the bigger washer on the inside. So it should be, I don't know if you can see that, you've got the, the small washer, the big washer, the small washer and the other big washer. It's a bit fiddly to get that to sit properly. A case of getting the three to fit in. What we might have to do is just cut those lugs on the, um, you can see just in there. If there's any little bits of plastic left on the lugs, you might just have to uh, just cut those with a knife. So after we've got those in, Get them all in and tighten that. Now this needs to be really tight. If it's not, over time the button will just fall off. So I'll give it a good tighten with a pair of pliers, making sure that you don't over tighten it and strip the plastic. 
you need to use Loctite? You can use Loctite um, just on there. It's, it's probably recommended to put some Loctite on. Um, just make sure that it, it is tightly put on there. I've used um, a few different things, you know, plastic, metal, glue, or Loctite will, will hold that. There is another screw that you can put on. If there's enough thread, it tends not to be on the SX machines that you need the other screw, so the other bolt even. So you might not need that one. This connector then simply connects to the only connector it can do on the main board. There's only one way there's only one way that you can connect it. pushes in and then this wire here uh, just tie with the cable tie that's in there and it should just bit of the whole process is actually getting the keyboard back on, which is a bit of a, a practice start. You need to get the, I don't know if you can just take the camera underneath. You've got the three lugs underneath. Basically you need to manoeuvre the keyboard into position so that the lugs are in before you just drop it down on the top. And then refit the screws. It is, is programming, programming the machine so that the machine recognises the fault. So programming now to configure the I buttons. First thing is to turn the key to SP and we need to sign on as a manager or as an administrator on the system. I've got it set up with one on this particular demo. I've pressed one and then Clark. Highlighted on here is program functions so we press enter to go into the program functions and then type 113 and enter to go into the system program. I'm then going to set, first of all, 76 and enter to enable the I button. So I'll scroll down using the down arrow, press enter to toggle that to yes, then clear to exit from there. Then I'm going to set the timeout by doing 17 and enter. Scroll down to each of the lines that say yes in here and press enter to switch them to no. Everything in this particular flag needs to be set to no for the I buttons to work properly. Okay. Press clear to exit from there. And the final bit of this is 89 and enter. And we're going to set this so that the I button works in every key position. Okay. Now be careful here. If you press clear too many times, you only need to press it twice at this point. Uh, if you exit from here now, you won't be able to log back onto the system with the Clark code that you just used to get in there. Um, you have to give us a call to find the engineer code. What we're going to do now is actually allocate one of the I buttons or some of the I buttons to the Clarks. So that's done with 117 and enter. And that will give you a list of all the Clarks on screen. Simply press enter to pick one of the clerks, put the fob on the reader, it beeps and that button's now assigned to that clerk. We'll do another one. So I'll pick clerk 5, press enter, put the fob on the reader, it beeps and moves down to the next clerk. We can then set the names and other details of that clerk in the 
program up one, two, three, and enter. So we've got assistant there, so we selected that one, we're pressing enter. If you've got n the name highlighted, you can press enter, and then use the alphabetic keyboard, which I hope will be underneath there, and then you can type in the name of the person that it's going to be. The code needs to remain the same. RepSecure and ProgSecure identify what this clerk's allowed to do. Um, depending on how those are set means the clerk can take X or Z reports or can program the machine. This particular clerk's allowed to do everything, having one one there. If you want to change that, we simply press enter, put a zero in, enter, put a zero in. And now that clerk's not allowed to do any programming or setup. So switch it back, we just put a one in there, enter, enter, one and enter. So Robert's allowed to do everything. Scroll down to Clark 5, pick the name there, press enter again to go into the, the programming, type in Jonathan, press enter, and Jonathan, we're going to leave that at 0 and 0 so that Jonathan can't do any programming. Press clear a few times till we get the other sound and then press Clark to exit from that mode. If turn the key to register now and put one of the readers on, we'll see that Jonathan is now registered on the system. And then we can just press Clark to log him off. Put Robert on and Clark to log off. If I turn the key to Z and sign on with Jonathan's Clark, Oh, Robert's Clark. Now we've got all the options available. I'll just press Clark again. If I sign on with Jonathan's Clark, you see that at the top that says no options. That's the program security and report security that we just set up. Full, full settings of programming are available in the how-to guide, aren't they, as well, yeah. which has been emailed up to Steve. So, general operation, put the fob on, sell some items, finalise, Put the fob on, sell some items, finalise, put another fob on, sell some items, put the other fob back on, and it'll switch between the two. Uh, the final bit here is to remove these keys from the keyboard. So we're going to sign on as Robert and hopefully we'll have some program functions available. Yeah. So, down the list here, we should have one that's 110. If I can either scroll down using the arrow key, and then we've got flexible keyboard layout, so we're pressing enter on that. And we're going to put some, even though we're going to disable these, we're actually going to put a function key on there. So we select function keys and enter. And the first function key is not used, so we're going to select that and press the key. Scroll back up to it. Press it, enter again, select it, put that on. Scroll up, enter. Okay, so those keys now have no function assigned. You can press clear a few times until we hear this other sort of beep. Press clear, and now those keys don't work.